Now let's talk about evaluating resonance structures for stability. The resonance hybrid is the weighted average of the resonance structures. What do we mean by weighted average? We mean that the most stable resonance structure contributes the most strongly. So, what criteria do we use? When evaluating resonance structures, we have three rules. And these go in descending order of importance. That means rule number one is the most important, then rule number two, then rule number three. Rule number one says the best resonance structure is the one that has the greatest number of filled octets. In other words, when you have a carbocation, those are weaker contributors. Rule number two is to have the fewest non-zero formal charges. So if you have two resonance structures, one where everything has a formal charge of zero, and another one where you have a plus one and a minus one, the one where everything is neutral is better. And rule number three, if you're going to have a negative formal charge, it's better to put it on the more electronegative atom. Now, you might think it's better to put a positive formal charge on the less electronegative atom. That is also true except in the case of carbon because carbon has a suboctet. Let's look at some examples. So in this molecule, we have a lone pair adjacent to a carbocation. If we draw on that curved arrow and change that lone pair to a pi bond, we end up with the following. Now, of these two resonance structures, the second one is more important because everything has a complete octet, whereas when you have a carbocation, that is a sextet. Rule number two says we want to have the fewest non-zero formal charges. So if we inspect this molecule, we have an allylic lone pair, and we also have a pi bond with different electronegativity. So let's start off with the single curved arrow. And the result of that is definitely less stable because now we have three non-zero formal charges instead of just one where we started. Moreover, we have a carbocation adjacent to a carbanion that typically is very unstable. But it's a resonance structure nonetheless. Then we go ahead and do the lone pair adjacent to the carbocation. And now we have our third resonance structure, where again we have one non-zero formal charge. So the second resonance structure is definitely not as good as either the first or the third. How do we differentiate between the first and the third? Well, then we go on to rule number three, which says that if you're going to have a negative formal charge, it's better to put it on the more electronegative atom. So, a carbanion versus an oxyanion. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, and hence, the structure with the oxyanion is better than the structure with the carbon ion. As far as the resonance hybrid of this molecule, we've got some partial negative charge on the oxygen, we've got some partial positive charge on this carbon, and we've got some partial negative charge on this carbon. Moreover, there's a partial pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. 
and a partial pi bond between the carbon and the carbon. Now, let's see here. The most important features of this hybrid are the partial negative on the oxygen and the partial pi bond between the two carbons. Here's an old test question that gives you an example of how to use evaluating resonance structures. The question asks, uh, in the resonance hybrid of the structure given at the right, which atom has the largest partial negative charge? So what you do is you draw all the resonance structures that have a negative formal charge on some atom, and then whichever one is most stable, the atom that is negative in that one will have the largest partial negative charge. So the first thing we need to do is identify some patterns. So we've got lots of patterns here. This is a pi with delta En. Here we have an allylic lone pair and another um, pi with the difference in electronegativity. So we just need to go through these one by one. Let's start here. So if we change that pi bond into a lone pair, we end up with an oxyanion and a carbocation. in addition to our carbanion. This is definitely less stable because it has a sextet. So then maybe we can fix that sextet by putting that pi bond there. But now we have another carbocation with a sextet. So neither of those are very good. Um, so far, the carbon that was negative in the initial structure has more partial negative charge than the oxygen does. So let's try a different tack. What if we do this allylic lone pair here? Now we have a nitrogen with a partial negative charge. That's probably better because nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon. So B would be the best answer. And of course, there's actually an intermediate between these two where if we just do this pi bond with a difference in electronegativity, but now we have um, a carbanion, oops, sorry, that's a carbanion, right next to a carbocation. and we have three atoms with formal charge. So that's really bad because not only do we have three non-zero formal charges, but we also have the um, carbocation, which has a sextet. So that's why this is the most stable resonance structure. And going back, B is the best answer. Nitrogen has the most partial negative charge in the resonance hybrid.